Welcome to the Orange Couch. I'm Mark. I'm Amanda. And this is Breaking Bad, Season 5, Episode 1. Live free or die. Water, fire, air, and dirt. Fucking magnets. How do they work? Because I say so. Here we are with the man who beat cancer, cornered the southwestern meth market, and killed the great Gus Fring. Of course he thinks he's invincible. He thinks he's always going to win. This is despite the fact that he screwed up royally, and by the way that he always does, by taking things too far. You know, there's another character on this show who used to act like he was untouchable and that things would always work out for him, even when big threats were staring him down. What was his name again? I will never breathe one word of this. Yeah, that would be Ted. It's ridiculous for Walt to think he can take on the DEA, drug dealers, and the police. It was also ridiculous for Ted to think he could take on the IRS. And ridiculous for him to think he could take on people who throw around hundreds of thousands of dollars. But now that he's paid for it with a broken neck, he realizes he's not invincible anymore. He's changed his tune accordingly. Right now, it seems like Walt will never get there. Every time he screws up, he just takes it as more evidence that he can clean up any mess he makes. And yet, in typical and sometimes annoying Breaking Bad fashion, we got a flash forward of a much different Walt. He seemed scared, alone, not necessarily beaten, but certainly aware of his vulnerability. And for the first time in a long time, I think we saw him take medicine. This is future Walt showing that he'll get to where Ted is now. Check it out. That's not on the manifest. The theme of this episode was really the law of unintended consequences. Which, you could argue, has always been the driving force of the plot of the show. What? Just in this episode? Walt's brilliant plan to kill Gus and blow up the lab led the feds right to Gus's computer. And trying to destroy that computer leads the cops to finding evidence that will presumably be even juicier. Walt cleaned up evidence at his house of the bomb and the poisonous flowers, but the rising cigarette was whipped out again. That's a loaded gun in the first act, if I ever saw one. And can I just kind of say what BS it is that that five-second frisk of Jesse in last season led to the guy finding the smokes, opening the pack, Getting the right cigarette, which how would he even know what that is, and putting it all back in Jesse's pants without him noticing. Anyway, every time Walt thinks he's cleaning up a mess, he ends up spraying more evidence everywhere. And making new enemies. Like Ted, Hank's another guy who's come out of a life-threatening situation with a bit more humility. His friend tries to get him to gloat, but Hank's so focused on the actual work that it doesn't even occur to him to boast. So while Walt is scrambling around... Hank has quietly learned how to be methodical. We also got more confirmation that Jesse doesn't need Walt to do his thinking for him. Because while everyone else is dreaming up bombs for the evidence locker, it's Jesse who says the right word. You are probably talking about two feet of reinforced concrete. Or what about a magnet? What? Even though Jesse has come into his own, he doesn't really realize it yet. He's still following Walt's every lead and giving Walt everything he asks for, including his money. Jesse still doesn't understand how smart he is and how parasitic Walt is. If there's a voice of reason on the show, it's Mike, and he sees right through this relationship. If you have any brains, you'll take that money you saved, and you skip town. Today. Right now. This is Walt's fundamental problem. He can't stop throwing good money after bad. And he's convinced Jesse of his delusion. Jesse's not the only person in his thrall. Poor Skylar knows Walt is bad news in her heart, but she's never quite been able to eject him from her life. And what do you make of that last scene? He was convincing her that everything that has gone wrong between them is her fault. By saying, I forgive you, he's implying that she had something to be sorry for. And what do you make of her face at the end after he says that? I find that ambiguous. Which, in the Breaking Bad universe, probably means it's going to be a big deal. We'll travel a little farther down Walt's Dark Road next week on The Orange Couch. 